You know, the, all of the, the great people that you, you know, you think about in the history of Baltimore, you know, they come with pride from each of the schools that they've attended. My dad was a, a Douglas graduate. My mother was a, a Dunbar graduate. And I was um, with uh, Will Barton yesterday when I said at Easterwood, and um, he graduated from, from Lake Clifton. And they, they, all, they, they all have a lot of pride about the schools that they attend because they know that because they made that commitment to their education, it was a good jumping off point. So that's why we're here. You know, we want you to understand that the, the Baltimore rises and falls on what you decide you want to become. And that's why it's so important uh, to make sure that you're here, you're in school, that your partners, that you're communicating. If you're not getting what you want, I can't do anything about prom. But as far as schools and after school activities, you know, that sort of thing, if, if there's something, if, if there's a way for us to help to make sure that the programs and the things that you want that will help you reach your potential, we're here. Councilman, your proposed law, tell me with the new curfew, curfew law, how the changes would be and what it is now compared to it. Well, right now, uh, on the weekends, our young people, no matter what age, 0 to 16, can be out until midnight, and during the school nights, they can be out until 11. I want to change our curfew and modernize it, like most cities, to have a tiered curriculum for both based on age and the time of year. So for 0 to 13, it will be 9 p.m. all year round. For those individuals 14 to 16, it will be 10 p.m. during the weeknights in the school year and 11 p.m. in the summertime and on weekends. We have to do better about preparing our young people for school, but also making them safe. There's no reason for a 10-year-old child to be outside at 10 p.m., 11 p.m. at night by themselves without an adult, no matter what time of year. Madam Mayor, there is a correlation between crime and young people being out late, too, isn't there? It is. And when we have kids, especially when they're unsupervised, what we're saying is it's okay uh, to get involved in activities and to, to be vulnerable. We don't want kids to, uh, to harm anyone or to be harmed themselves. And when we allow them, when we turn a blind eye and let them out on the street, kids, you know, four, five, six years old, out on the streets at 1 o'clock in the morning, you know, we're saying that's all right. And the councilman and I and, you know, the, the, the community needs to step up. We need to step up and say that we can do better uh, for our kids and make sure that the family uh, that of these young people have the support and the services they need so they can provide a safe environment for our kids. How will it be enforced? And what will the penalties be? So it will be enforced just like we enforced the curfew today. The police department will be the lead agency on that. Uh, but but the key to this legislation is, is actually that we want to divert a lot of these cases away from the court and divert them into family strengthening and training programs so that we're not just finding people and sending places to the court that we know our court is already burdened down with major crimes and burdened down with minor crimes so that we can, again, as the mayor said, help these families understand that they can do better for their young people and do better for their families. But I've been in discussion with the mayor's administration and the police department of trying to expand our enforcement of the curfew, mm -hmm. but also try to run our nighttime curfew center all year long. What would what, what the, the, the penalties be? The penalty, the penalty would be just as today they can receive a civil citation. I've actually upped the amount to $500, but that can be null and void if that family completes a family strengthening training course. Ron, were you surprised by the responses that the, the students gave? I was impressed uh, with the responses. You know, these young people know what they want. Uh, they know what they want to see as far as enhanced uh, after-school programming, and they're committed to their future. You know, I made it very clear that you know Baltimore rises and falls on each and every one of our, our our classes, our graduating classes, and we don't have, you know, like I said, we, we don't have a spare ninth grade class. We need to make sure that every single one of them reaches their uh, potential, and it, it, they get it, and I, I like their energy and their willingness to, to uh, be in dialogue and to be clear about what they they need to be successful. And we used to have truant offices, correct? Do we not have those anymore? Well, uh, we have the school police that works on that uh, during the school day, but our uh, our truancy efforts and our I'm sorry our curfew efforts are around after hours. Okay. Curfew. Um, I, I just happened. It's funny because I just happened to see some kids last week by Carver High School, and they were obviously early high school, middle school, and a, a city police. I mean, a school policeman drove by. No, made no effort for the kids to run or move or anything like that. I mean, it's like they don't fear now. Um, do you think that they really understand the importance of 
Oh, yeah, yeah, I think that, that, that the young kids do. If you go to the curfew center on weekends like I do during the summertime, you can tell that a group of five get caught, but seven of them got, got away. They know what the curfew is. They know they're in violation of it. But more telling is the young people that come into the curfew center to tell them that they got caught on purpose because this is the only way they'll get food, that they haven't seen their mom or their dad in a couple of days. Those are the kids that, that we really need to touch and see, figure out what's going on with their families. Most of these kids are out there are not doing causing trouble, but they are in harm's way, and if they're not eating, this is some of the things that you hear from these young people. We have to figure out, we have to do more for those young people. Academically, how are you going to measure the success of this program? I can tell you, you can by the number of arrests, or, or, or but how, how are you going to measure academically, which is the goal, right? Well, it's one of the, go one of the goals. I guess you can only, it, 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 it wouldn't be a direct correlation. But it's just a correlation just for the simple fact that if we have less kids that are out at 11.30 at night on the weekends, then chances are we're going to have more of them in school during the daytime that are going to be willing to learn. Because if they're, if they're out there late, even if they're up and at school that early, they're not going to be as energetic as they need. They're not going to be as attentive as they need to be, in their, in their, especially in their early morning classes. With respect to the... Uh, we're going to have the... We'll probably announce the hearing at this Monday's council meeting so that... The, the, it will be voting on at that public safety hearing, so we'll probably for the next few weeks to a month. With respect to our curfew center, uh, we one of the things we look to as a sign of success is the the number of recidivism. You know, we want to make sure that if we find a child that is out past a curfew, we find that child once, and it's not an ongoing problem. So that's that's why we have the services there, and we've increased the partners that we have in the curfew center to make sure if it's a, a social worker that the family needs, that that social worker is found for that family. If it's a, a juvenile justice issue, if it's a school issue, that we have all of those partners uh, there. And with respect to daytime, uh, with the, the truancy during the day, that's what this visit is about. We want our young people to understand how valuable they are to us, that this is not a joke. In order for them to reach their potential, to, to get to where they want to be in life, they have to be in school. And that's why you know, we'll be here and we'll be making other visits. I think um, Mayor Rollins Blake for coming in and talking to us mostly. So like we can mold, like so we can, you know, understand more why are like why are we reaching our goals and coming to school every day and that's all.